Hello and welcome to another DAuthr v3 tutorial. This time we will learn about the authentication scan command and how that can be used as a part of attacking Wi-Fi devices. So um, an authentication scan basically means being able to see uh, when a Wi-Fi device connects, so authenticates um, to an access point. This command is actually DOFV3 exclusive, meaning that the DOFV2 doesn't have this feature. So to get started, check out our other tutorials on the DOFV3 because you will need an ESP8266 board with the latest DOFV3 firmware installed. Luckily for you, we sell them at spacehoon.com, so be sure to check that out and support our work. Then we will also need the Hunitor, a terminal application that is used to interface with the Dioffa v3 as that is serial command line only. So last week we talked about the scan command and how to use that to see both connected and unconnected Wi-Fi devices in our area. And this tutorial here actually perfectly ties into that. So be sure to watch that first, but enough talking, let's get started. So I'm going to start the Hunitor and connect to my dauthr. And now that I'm good to go, I'm going to start with the help of command. So this will give us all the information we need. Okay, so we can see, first of all, that all the parameters are optional, which means that you could just type auth and you're good to go. And by doing that, you would scan for authentication packets on all channels and don't filter anything. So let's get over the parameters because they are very important for having a successful scan. So first we have dash BSSID and that means filter the scan results by BSSID. So basically we would then be only looking for packets from the BSSID you specified. Um, so an example would be this and then you would type in the MAC address, this is obviously not a real MAC address. If you want, you can actually use multiple MAC addresses. So this would scan for authentication packets, but only addressed to those MAC addresses. So the next argument is dash AP. And I think that's the most important parameter for this command, because we are able to run a authentication scan on a specific access point, and we can easily select that access point by first running an access point scan and then just um, typing the ID we were given by the scan results. That way we won't have to copy or type out any MAC addresses like with the dash BSS ID and we won't have to specify the channel, which brings me to the next um, parameter, which is dash CH. And as I said, this is for specifying the channel. So by default, it will um, search on all channels, but you can specify a specific channel or a list of channels. So it won't channel hop because if we channel hop, we lose a bunch of packets. And then we have CT, this is the channel hop time. So how long do you stay on each individual channel? If you're channel hopping, you can experiment with that value. However, most of the time it's just good as it is. Then we have dash T, so this is the scan timeout or basically how long do you wanna scan? By default, this is infinite. So your scan just keeps on running um, because this will actually give you a nice live output and it's just great to just leave it running live and um, stop it whenever you have to. But optionally, you can specify a timeout. So that would look something like this. For example, this would mean scan for five minutes. And then we have dash save, and this is for saving probe requests that this command finds because the authentication scan is not really looking for probe requests, but it could still pick them up and they are useful in combination with a attack I will show you later. So why don't we just start a authentication scan? So I have a test network set up here. I want to use the dash AP um, argument to make my life easier. But first I'm going to scan for access points. Okay, the network I'm looking for is the one with ID one. And so I'm going to type auth-ap 
one. And here you can see why dash AP is so important and also super useful having IDs in the scan results. So we can just reference the ID instead of specifying the MAC address because we have to copy that over and then also the channel because otherwise it would search on all channels. Now we can just say auth dash AP one and start a scan and you will see uh, it would list the parameters and we are scanning forever or until we say stop uh, only on channel 10 which is the channel this access point is running on we are not channel hopping uh, big mode uh, also something i'm going to explain later uh, we're not saving stations for that we would have had to specify dash save in the end um, but we didn't so that's a no and then we have a filter set up for one BSS ID and that's the BSS ID listed here and that's the one of the access point we're looking for. And then we have a little table here which prints the live output for whenever it picks up a authentication packet. So what I'm going to do is connect to this network and see what happens. There we have it. This actually only shows one packet because I only connected once and it was able to connect to the network successfully so it didn't have to send a second request but um, just to show you that this is live, I will continue talking while reconnecting to the network. And here we have it. So let's go over the results column by column. So we have the RSSI. Um, this is the received signal strength. So how strong was the signal uh, we picked up from this specific packet? And the bigger the number, the closer you could be to that device, although a lot of factors play into the signal strength um, that you receive. The next column is channel and yeah, both are on channel 10 because that's the only channel we are looking for as specified above. Then we have vendor, which is empty. And this is something I had in the last video as well. It's probably because the device I'm using here is not in the database that is programmed into the Diofa v3. Um, here the MAC address is actually hidden or at least parts of it. So I don't leak all of my information. Um, so yeah, there's the MAC address is the next column. So this basically identifies which device is currently trying to connect to a network. Um, so we see that both authentication packets we found use the same or come from the same MAC address. So this is both the same device. If the IDs would be different, we know that there are multiple devices around. We see the SSID of the network this device is trying to connect to and we see the BSS ID of the network. This might be useful if we have a mesh network, which means there could be multiple access points with the same SSID. And the only way to differentiate them is through the MAC address because the MAC address is supposed to be unique. But yeah, this is pretty much it. So we see now that a device with this MAC address connects to the access point with this name. So I think this is already pretty cool because we can see the individual device and which network it is trying to connect to. It doesn't mean that it's now connected to this network. This just shows you which devices are trying to connect to a network. Um, this could be super interesting when you run this on a public access point and just see how many people are connecting to it. Because you might also find devices that are automatically connecting to that network, especially if it's an open network, maybe from um, a coffee shop or something. And when people walk by that coffee shop, their phones in their pockets automatically connect to that Wi-Fi because it's nearby. And so you could sit in that coffee shop and see all the devices that know this network. So they have been to that shop before and automatically connect to it. Now what we can do is monitor for probe requests. So we know which networks devices are looking for. And then we can create those networks and we can see who's trying to connect. And this might be useful for defeating Mac randomization because when devices are trying to connect to a network, they often use their regular Mac address and not a randomized one. Let's start by running a station scan. Okay, I finished the scan. And here are the results. We see that it found two probe requests and it's super cool because we can see Mac randomization at work here. You see that both requests come from different Mac addresses, yet the RSSI is very similar and both probe for the same network name. 
So I know this is the same device and that we can see Mac randomization at work here, but in reality, the, or the point of Mac randomization is that you wouldn't be able to differentiate, especially when there are a bunch of devices around. And also, even if you know both are the same device, um, you still don't know the real Mac address. But what we now know is that this is asking for this SSID. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to use another command that I will probably show in detail in a separate video. So the beacon command creates fake networks. So networks that are not really there. Instead, it just sends a bunch of packets, so-called beacon frames, that tell all the Wi-Fi devices around you, hey, here's a network, this is my name, and this is my settings, you know, uh, everything you need to connect to that network. But um, here, this is not actually creating a network. It is only advertising a network that's not really there. But from a user's perspective, you would see it in your network list. And that's what we are trying to accomplish here. We are trying to make this SSID that um, our Mac randomized device is trying to probe, this one, um, we are trying to create that network. So now this attack is running. And on my test device, I can see this SSID in the network list. However, I'm not able to see whether or not this device is actually trying to connect to our fake network. For that, I need the auth command again. So um, what we can do is use BSSID and then copy the BSSID of the beacon attack here, um, in here, and then we can also copy the channel and we would run that and it's all good. But there's an easier way. And for that, I'm just going to stop the beacon command and run it again, but this time with slightly different parameters. So I'm going to run it with the same SSID, but I'm gonna declare the parameter dash M, uh, dash M for monitor. And what it will do is start the beacon attack, but also an authentication scan, and it will copy over all the parameters and all the settings we need. Okay, so here you can see the beacon attack started and the authentication scan started. I'm going to head over to my test device, which is trying to connect to the specified SSID. Here we go. Now this looks crazy, right? A lot of packets are received and this is because the network is not really there. Okay, our test device is trying to connect to a fake network that is not there. We are just advertising it's there, it's not there. And so it tries to uh, log into it again and again and again. And that's why we have this massive output. But you can see here, there's a different MAC address. If I scroll up, this is clearly different to this and is also clearly different to this. So this might be the real MAC address of this device. Um, super cool. I will make a separate video on the beacon command and show this feature again, but it's part of the authentication command as well. So both go kind of hand in hand, but yeah, isn't that cool? Uh, you, we just created a fake network and we see who's trying to connect to it and we see its real MAC address. And if we look at the authentication scan parameters, uh, we see it's now set to a scan time of five minutes and that's because the beacon command is running for five minutes, so they are both synced. We see that it's scanning on channel one, which is also the channel the beacon frames are being sent at. Um, we see there's no channel time, because again, it's only one channel, we don't need to channel hop. And we see that the beacon mode is on. So this is the beacon mode, um, where it basically works hand in hand with the beacon attack. So both commands run at the same time and exchange information. Safe stations, no. Um, that's maybe something I can show you. And BSSID filter zero. Why? Because it's not really filtering for BSSIDs, but instead filtering for um, connection requests to the beacons. It's, it works a bit differently in the uh, back end, but that's basically why. Okay, super cool example. Now, the only thing left to mention is the dash save parameter uh, we've seen in the beginning of the video. Here, you can see the current station scan results, and it contains our two probe requests we found earlier. And in the last example, you have seen how important a probe request can be uh, for an attack. So ideally, we want to run an authentication scan, but also keep collecting new probe requests. 
so we can run this attack again and again and maybe with multiple SSIDs. And for that we can run the authentication scan and just declare dash safe while running it. So I'm, I'm just going to do that and I'm going to use my test device and tell the test device to look for a bunch of networks that are not really there. And by them not being there means this device will actively ask if, if they are around. Okay, I've instructed my device to look for three networks that are not really existing. And we haven't seen any live output here. And that's because the live output of the authentication scan only tells you about authentication packets. And I have not been authenticating to any network. But I can stop this and look at the station scan results again. And now I see the probe requests I gathered in the meantime. Super cool. So I see the network we had before and I see a, a new one and another new one. And there's my third one. And it's super cool because we can see that it's using nearly always a new MAC address. So yeah, this is the authentication scan command. Uh, this is a more advanced feature and something you use in combination with other commands. But I hope this has still been interesting. Uh, definitely something you can use to get a bit of more insight about what's going on around you with the devices you have maybe nearby and um, just learn a bit about Wi-Fi. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to leave a comment if you have any questions or if you want to see a certain feature or have feedback to give. There are a bunch of projects we are working on. So uh, if you're interested, subscribe. Um, go to spacen.com if you want to buy one of our Andromeda boards and support our work. Um, but otherwise, just thanks for watching and have a great day.